start off looking at ionic structures, so structures that have ionic bonding within them. Now remember, ionic bonding is when electrons um, transfer between atoms so that we form positive and negative ions. Now, if I just do a quick search for ionic bonding and click on any of these, you'll see the kind of pictures, the dot and cross diagrams that we drew at GCSE. And if I go to the page, you can see that we represent it with two atoms, a sodium atom, a chlorine atom. We have an electron that's transferred from the sodium to the chlorine, which um, forms a positive sodium ion and a negative chloride ion. But they eventually form a giant lattice that looks like this. So it's not just one sodium ion, one chloride ion. It's many, many ions together in a giant lattice. And each of those sodium ions is surrounded by six chloride ions and each of those chloride ions is surrounded by six sodium ions and so there's not just an attraction to one um, singular ion, it's an attraction all around it. So it's held really strongly within this giant lattice. So for that reason, the first property that we can talk about for giant ionic structures, for ionic structures, is that they have high melting and boiling points. They're difficult to melt. Um, we need a large amount of energy to overcome um, the electrostatic forces between the ions. So ionic structures, ionic compounds tend to be solids at room temperature. So having a think about that, if I tell you that sodium chloride um, has a melting point of 801 degrees Celsius, um, but the melting point of magnesium oxide is nearly 3,000, 2,852 degrees Celsius, can you think about a reason that could explain this? Well, the reason is you've got a, a 2 plus iron and a 2 minus iron, the magnesium and the oxygen. Um, have a higher electrostatic um, force between them um, because of the higher charge and so therefore that's what we have to overcome to melt the lattice, um, to melt the compound and therefore it has a, a higher melting point. Now this lattice structure is also the reason that solid um, ionic structures won't conduct electricity. They're made up of charged particles, they're made up of ions, but these ions are fixed in place, they're not free to move, so there's no charge carriers um, when um, ionic structures are solid. However, if you find some way of breaking that lattice down and allowing the charged particles to move, then ionic structures will conduct electricity. So, if you melt them or if you dissolve them, um, then ionic compounds will conduct electricity because then the charged ions are free to move um, and if we get a flow of charge um, that's electricity. Ionic compounds tend to be soluble in polar solvents. Ionic compounds tend to dissolve in polar solvents but not non-polar substances. For the ionic compound to dissolve you need to break down the lattice structure and that's going to require energy. We've got strong electric static forces that are holding these ions together. So we need to kind of compensate for this somehow. Um, so if we're using energy to break down the lattice, then we need to release energy when the, the ionic compound dissolves. And this happens, for example, when sodium chloride dissolves in, in water. When sodium chloride dissolves in water, you get the negative parts of the water molecule being attracted to the um, positive ions. You also get attractions between the negative ions and the water. And what happens is the water actually surrounds the ions and um, we call this hydration and when this happens a certain amount of energy is released um, and this compensates for the energy needed to break down the lattice. So ionic compounds tend to be soluble in polar solvents. The bonding that occurs in metals, metallic bonding, is also um, reliant on ions held together in a lattice. We talk about a giant metallic lattice. 
in solid metal. But whereas in ionic compounds you have positive and negative um, particles, ions, that are fixed in place, with metals the positive ions are fixed, are held in a lattice, in a giant metallic lattice, but the electrons, the negative um, electrons, are delocalised. They're free to move. And what we mean by delocalised is that the electrons aren't associated with a particular um, ion, but they're shared between all the ions, all the atoms um, within the metal structure. So that leads to our first property. Um, giant metallic lattices um, mean that um, metals tend to have high melting and boiling points. The delocalised electrons mean that metals conduct electricity even when they're solid because the electrons move freely and they um, act as charge carriers. Metals are also um, ductile or malleable, this means they can either be drawn into wires, that's the ductile, or they can be hammered or pressed into shapes. And again, this is to do with the um, delocalised electrons, which allow the atoms to slide over each other.